after the incidents that take place in the story, I've come to realize that death is much closer to us than we think. Two years ago, I was in South Africa visiting Cape Town. If you don't know where that is, it's the southernmost tip of Africa. It's full of forests, beaches, and natural reserves. Well, I was down there by myself, doing some inner soul searching. I know that sounds corny, but try and go on vacation by yourself and see how freeing it feels. Anyway, I was at the local bar restaurant they have there called The Leopard. It's a magnificent restaurant directly on the Atlantic Ocean. I definitely had one too many drinks, but I didn't care because I was getting a taxi back to my hotel room. Well, I met this girl there, Rose. She was living in Cape Town for the next year for her job and was also there alone. We honestly hit it off, and I kept buying us more rounds of drinks. We seriously had like over 10 servings each. About two hours after we met, Rose offered to show me this secret spot on the beach nearby. Rose was beautiful, I was drunk, and I immediately just said yes, not even thinking twice. I paid the tab, and Rose led me down by the beach maybe about 30 yards from the bar that we were just at. It was almost nighttime by this point. She started taking off her shirt and her jeans that she had on. She said to come into the water with her. Again, I was hammered, and I thought this was the best idea ever. I stripped down to my boxers and got into the water with her. It was actually pretty cold. If I wasn't as drunk as I was, I don't think I would have been able to handle the frigidness. We went out to about our chests. The water was very calm, there were no waves, and it was honestly a surreal moment in my life. But the water was so cold that I was starting to sober up. I started realizing how dangerous this was. Two drunk people swimming in the ocean, and started to suggest to Rose that we should swim back to land. Just then, I saw Rose's body go underwater. It was nearly dark at this point, and when she went under, it was utterly silent. I thought she was messing with me, when, all of a sudden, she re-emerged from the water, and half her body was inside of this giant shark's mouth. She was screaming for help. I was close enough where I could literally reach out and grab her. When she resurfaced, I just started blindly hitting the shark as hard as I could. I literally did everything I could to make the shark let her go. I think I struck it pretty hard in the gills, and the shark let Rose go. I was terrified the shark was going to come back with a vengeance, so I grabbed Rose and paddled as hard as I could back to the shore. I won't go into the full gruesome details of what happened, but when we finally got back to shore, Rose was missing her entire right leg, and her right arm was literally hanging on by threads of skin. She was rushed to the nearest hospital, but, unfortunately, the wounds were so severe and she had lost so much blood that she had died before she even made it. I now have what they call survivor's guilt, because I have no idea why the shark chose her over me that day. I've been so affected by this that I refuse to ever enter the ocean again. I've come to find out that Cape Town is a known hotspot for shark activity especially great whites. It's been two years since this happened, and I just pray that Rose is at peace. Thank you for listening. Last summer, me and my buddies were vacationing in Virginia Beach. We always get called beach bums because we spend all day on the beach just surfing and relaxing. Well, it was the last day of our vacation, and we wanted to spend as much time on the beach and water as possible before we had to leave. There were actually some pretty decent waves that day, and the beach was pretty packed. We were taking a break from surfing and just eating some food on our beach towels, just watching the other people surf and play in the water. Honestly, it was a perfect summer day. We saw these group of kids playing not even four feet in the water. They were throwing a football to each other, splashing around and screaming with joy. But that's when we heard a different type of scream. Not a scream of summer joy fun in the sun kind. It was more like a scream for dear life. We saw one of the kids who was throwing the football 
flailing his arms around wildly, screaming his head off in terror. Even from our beach towel, we could see the water starting to turn red. Without even thinking, we all shot up from our towels and sprinted into the water. I can't even believe what we saw, but when we got close enough to the screaming kid, we could see this massive dark figure in the water just shaking this poor kid like a rag doll. Me and my buddies all did whatever we could to get the kid free from the shark. Literally, my friends and I were beating the shit out of it to let this kid go. When it finally did, we saw the massive shark swim back into the depths of the ocean. At this point, the kid was unconscious and there was blood everywhere. I don't mean to be graphic, but he literally was gushing blood from the open wounds. We all carried him quickly to the beach and put him in the sand. By now, most people on the beach realized what was happening and rushed over to help. This one guy stepped up and said he was a doctor and started to apply pressure on all the open wounds. Then another man swam in from the ocean. He had a surfboard tied to him. He started crying out loud that this was his son. I couldn't even imagine the terror of seeing your son in this condition. An ambulance drove onto the beach and the kid was rushed to the hospital. I wish this story had a happy ending, but I found out the kid passed away from his injuries during the surgeries. Words can't put into perspective the absolute nightmare it was seeing the fear on that kid's face when we tried to help him. Me and my friends are still absolutely heartbroken by this, and I can't even imagine how the father and the rest of the family feels. Mother nature and wildlife can be unforgiving. Me and my buddies still go surfing, but now it's always in the back of my mind that a shark is somewhere below me in the depths, just stalking me and waiting to attack. Rest in peace to that kid that day, and to everyone else, be safe out there. This story takes place when I was living out in California on Monterey Bay. I was surfing at one of my usual spots out at the Marina State Park. It's one of the best spots to surf and catch some pretty good waves. I lived with my roommate at the time, but on this day, I was out on the water alone. I was out early, like 8am, and there were only a few others on the beach. It was a very quiet and peaceful time. I was out maybe 20 yards in the ocean, just sitting on top of my surfboard, waiting for the next wave to come. I was admiring how calm the water was when my left ankle was tugged. This sharp hot pain seared up my leg and I pulled my ankle up onto my surfboard. I could see that I was bleeding and there was a deep bite mark on it. I instantly knew that this was some kind of shark and I was about to start paddling back to shore when I was suddenly knocked violently off my board. Despite the salt water burning my eyes, I opened them underwater and could see this massive shark circling me about five yards away. I mean, this thing was gigantic and was large enough to knock me off my board like I was nothing. And I prayed to God right then and there and asked that this is not how I die. I could see the shark turning around and starting to head back towards me. But before the shark could attack or do any more damage, there was this sudden whooshing sound. And out of nowhere, about 15 bottlenose dolphins appeared on the scene and they started to surround me. Like, they were literally swimming in circles around me, almost like in a protective circle. I quickly resurfaced, got onto my board, and started kicking as fast as I could to get back to shore. The wave finally came along, and I was able to ride that in, allowing me to get there much faster. When I got back onto land, I could see the dolphins jumping in the air and flapping their fins. The adrenaline hit me all at once, when I finally knew that I was safe and I actually started to cry. There were a few beachgoers nearby who saw my bleeding ankle and administered me to a first aid kit. I still ended up going to the hospital and needed about 20 stitches. I still thank God every day that I'm alive and that those bottlenose dolphins showed up to protect me. It's not uncommon for dolphins to notice people or other creatures in trouble and try to step in to help. If they hadn't, 
There's no doubt in my mind that I would have been eaten alive by that shark. If I could buy those dolphins a round of beers, I would. Thanks for listening.